everybody. This is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I'm here with what I'm sure a lot of you are waiting to see after last week's Chronicle Phase video. It's time for the confrontation with King Minos, or Minos, in Dante Inferno, an upcoming boss battler narrative campaign game. And as always, we accept no compensation for our crowdfunding coverage. We just want to help you make an informed decision. And if you like the content on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us through Patreon. You get early access to our videos and exclusive videos every month you can't see anywhere else. You can also listen to our podcast for great reviews and design discussions, or come and say hi on our Discord. So this is, again, the second half of Dante, where you are battling some kind of boss. In this case, we are at the feet of King Minos up on his throne with our four characters here. We're going to be battling him. And I do want to note, I don't know if I emphasized this enough with the last video, this is all still not only a prototype, but still very much in development. Even after uh, the suggestions and thoughts I had on the Chronicle phase uh, last week, the designers and uh, publisher of the game contacted me and were talking about how they're actually working on the exact same stuff that I talked about, like hiring writers to make the narrative even better and that kind of stuff. So they seem very receptive. They want, uh, from what I understand, the crowdfunding campaign to be one where the backers give ideas and give feedback and do playtesting. Uh, there will be a TTS mod. So everything you're seeing here could change greatly. I'll still give my thoughts at the end on what I like and what I'm not so sure about. But this is not representative of the final game. It is just a snapshot in time of what the game currently looks like. All right, so with that out of the way, let's read the narrative. Why are we fighting this dude? <laughs> and then uh, I'll get into the actual mechanics and start playing. So if you missed the last video, I'll give the TLDR version. Uh, Dante Alighieri, the great poet who wrote The Inferno. He's uh, living in paradise when he's called by the Archangel Gabriel, I think it was, to uh, say that there's something wrong in hell. And it turns out that a group of knights being led by some great, you know, messianic uh, leader, they have invaded hell, basically. And for some reason, King Minos has not kicked them out, has not stopped them from incursing or incursing. Is that a word <laughs> from their incursion into hell? So now through a uh, series of trials and tribulations, we have finally made it to Minos and he is going to answer for himself. See what is up. Let's get to it. You arrive at the court at last, where Greek columns rise in a ceiling covered with mist and stars, as if it were the Cretan night. The judge of hell awaits, sitting on his throne atop a long staircase. From where you stand, you can barely see the tale whose knots pronounce the sentence of the damned. There, mortals. You have put on such an act in order to draw my attention, have you not? Well, here I am, but know this. I am furious. You have interrupted my nuptial nights, which have been delayed for more than two millennia. The former king snarls, his thundering voice emerging from his massive bulk. It is at this point that you notice a woman who sneaks out from the back and everything falls into place. Minos did not rebel, not completely. He just allowed himself to consummate his marriage. And apparently not even the devil wanted to interfere. Nuptial nights, the poet expresses his indignation. Forgive me, your majesty and excellence, but in the name of the high power I beg, end your delight and return to the throne. Your court's recess has left the damned so lost that some have even returned through the dark forest. As you know well, it's Easter in the mortal world. The last thing men need is a hundred supposed messiahs, Dante argues with reason, fearful for the souls that can find their bodies again through the door that Christ opened. May the high power forgive me, but seven knights are my right, and seven knights I shall have. And you, garrulous poet, unless you wish for me to straighten that crooked nose of yours, I suggest you turn around with your people and do not bother me any longer. The host seems relentless. The Florentine thinks of counter-arguing, but you have your weapons in your hands already, certain that this hearing has ended. All right, so with the uh, narrative out of the way, let's get to the confrontation mode. So we always have four characters, which are the mercenary with his bent sword from travel, <laughs> the ranged outlaw who I put in the back, the rogue backstabbing artist, and the cleric healing support devotee. And it was clarified for me that each of these characters is archetypes, but that there will actually be more than four characters, at least uh, in expansions and future content and that kind of stuff. It's just that you'll always have the same basic type of character. Like, for example, there is always a mercenary, but it doesn't have to be the cell sword. You could have a different mercenary that would have totally different abilities and stats and stuff. 
So more replay than I realized. But anyway, we're going to have uh, player turns where we take actions, where we play maneuver cards, try to attack the enemy. In this case, either Minos or his throne. Both are possible targets. And then Minos will have his turns where he'll be activating with this giant deck of cards, including, if you watch the first part, the one Arcana card that we offered up in one of our skill tests. And the throne will also be taking turns. And these action cards are also Minos's in the throne's life pool. Every time we defeat one of these, they're going to get wounded and removed. So we need to, I guess, remove all of them. That's a lot of cards, y'all. And that's going to be through dice-based combats. We'll do different abilities to roll certain numbers of dice. There are two hit sides, one hit sides, and then a third of the sides have this little skull symbol called a fumble. And when you get two or more of those during an attack, you're going to resolve the counterattack on the back of whatever card is on top of the deck, and then potentially still wounded if you did enough damage. But yeah, so they're going to activate on their turn after all the champions, all the heroes have finished going, but they're also going to get to counterattack sometimes. Now, to talk about the map briefly, you've got these square sections that are called areas. And then within each area, you've got five spaces. You've got these four kind of on the outskirts spaces and this one central space. And the small spaces are for us. We can move into those and occupy those. While the big spaces are for the Malefactor. They always go in here and they'll always be facing one of the sides. So it kind of keeps a line of sight a little bit more easy. Their facing matters. Ours does not. So they will uh, keep track of their facing. But we don't have any facing to worry about. But even though there are all these different spaces, everything is still measured in areas. Like if uh, the outlaw was making a range three attack, you would just count one, two, three, three entire areas. It wouldn't be like one, two, three, four, five, counting all the little individual spaces. Now, I'm sure you also notice there is a vertical aspect to the game. You have ground level, level one, level two. It can even potentially get higher than that when you have abilities that can like raise and lower the earth. And you can move up and down levels wherever there is a staircase. You can push the malefactor off levels or fall off yourself. You take two damage for each level you fall. Usually that's not going to be enough to hurt the malefactor unless uh, you're pushing them from the highest levels. You also have terrain to interact with. These arcs here will get you finding cards. If you watch the story mode and the other video I made, findings are a little like one-time use bonus items. So you can get more of them than what you got during the story. You also have these pillars. You can jump on top of them to evade one of the enemy's attacks, uh, but they can destroy them and leave rubble that limits your movement. They can also pick them up and throw them at you, or they can pick you up and throw you at each other. Just lots of, uh, <laughs> lots of fun interactions with the things here. Now, the characters have a main character card as well. This one tells you about, I guess that's the lady, Pasife, um, his, his wife. <laughs> But uh, Minos has four, the throne has six, she'll have five, I guess, if we ever get her. And this is the minimum amount of damage you need to do to get rid of one of his vigor cards to wound him. And it's also a multiplier. So if a character got, I don't know, eight damage in a single blow, they would get rid of two of Minos' cards. They also have different uh, special abilities. So heavyweight here is something that some cards will tell you to activate. They'll be like, hey, do this uh, person's number one, where Minos uh, will grab hold of a pillar in his area, or he can heal himself of wounds. I hate that. And then he also can hold more things than normal, up to two of us and or pillars. That's great. There's also this fierceness track here. A lot of the actions we take are going to swap us forward or back in fierceness. And often the malefactors, the enemies, will target the fiercest character. So you can sort of, uh, you know, kind of think of it as like aggro and trying to pull for other people. All right, then we get to our characters. We can first of all hold up to one weapon, one miscellaneous item, and up to two findings cards. Uh, each of us starts with a basic starting weapon. I didn't find any artifacts for more. I gave Karen's rags to my artist. Kind of like Osworn before it, and I love this system. You can have full characters. I'm running two just to show you a bit more of the complications in the game system, the devotee and the artist. Or you can do little helper characters, which are a lot easier to run if you, you know, have little kids playing or don't want to manage as many people. So the mercenary and the outlaw, I've made just basic characters. This is everything you need for them. They can still hold items, but they're just going to get to like do some basic abilities over and over again to keep things a little bit simpler. But everybody has a key resource here, which is their vigor. 
and they're going to gain three at the beginning of every round. And they can, first of all, spend Vigor to do basic actions. For each area they want to move, it costs one Vigor. If they want to climb on a pillar, it costs one Vigor. Or open an arc, it costs one Vigor. Or trade items with someone in their space, uh, their area costs one Vigor. But also, Vigor is kind of like your life or defense. Whenever the enemies hit you, they'll deal a certain amount of damage. And if your Vigor goes to zero or even further below, you get wounded, which is going to fill up one of your three little spaces here. Or for the helpers, it'll turn one of their prepared or their performed into a wounded limiting your options gumming up your works unless you can get yourself restored and healed but speaking of these card spots they all start with warm-ups filling them up you'll have a hand of cards each of them has a value telling you how much fierceness it's going to cost for you to use it how much it's going to get the enemy's attention and you can play them to these empty spots and they'll have you do a bunch of cool things and you have to do them in order. One, two, three, moving, jumping on people, throwing knives at people, all kinds of really cool cinematic uh, actions. Each character also has special abilities, like the artist gets a bonus when she attacks somebody from behind. And she can also play maneuver cards on top of other maneuver cards so she can do more actions than anybody else. You're generally going to have a hand of four cards, by the way, and you refill it. But whenever you go through all of your cards, uh, if you are using your actions too quickly, then you get a random sin card. And these are interesting because you have two choices with them. You can either, let's see, which one is it? You can either resist the sin, which usually means you have to do like something negative, but then the card goes away entirely. Or you can give in to the sin, and it usually gives you a really awesome bonus, but then it goes into one of your spots just like you took a wound. So you've now taken away like a third of your staying power. There are uh, healing effects, especially from the devotee, that can get rid of these sin cards. But yeah, they'll kind of like uh, <laughs> mess around with you just like wounds will. But also, even if you don't choose to play a Sin card, it will still count as one of the four cards in your hand, and you can't just discard it. So you're kind of uh, stuck with it and getting fewer and fewer options every round until you choose to either resist the temptation or until you give in to it. <laughs> so, you know, lots of fun kind of thematic choices here. And those are honestly most of the kind of core mechanics. I'll explain other things as we go. And I'm still learning this one, too. This is actually my first time playing through the whole scenario. So I don't know what's going to happen when I kill Minos or start hurting him a lot. There are some event cards I haven't seen yet, so this should be exciting. But just briefly meet our characters, like I said, the artist can backstab, she can improvise, she can like let people climb on her back to get up to higher levels and move around a lot, you know, typical rogue kind of stuff. The devotee, as you can imagine, can heal people, give them more vigor. She has an altruism ability that gives her a bonus whenever she targets somebody else, one of the other characters with her powers. And she can also suffer stuff in their place to heal them. And then when they're full characters, the mercenary can, as you can imagine, tank for people, get their attention, uh, gain extra vigor, do a lot of melee damage. And the outlaw can do like long range attacks. He likes to move around a lot. Uh, he can also lay down traps and stuff for the malefactors. Just lots of cool stuff, even these four basic characters from what I've seen so far. But enough preamble. You'll see the rest as we go. Let's uh, go ahead and jump in and actually play. So each caravan turn starts with the cleanup step, where if we had maneuver cards, they would all be discarded from our board. But that doesn't include these warm-up cards. That would just be cards that we already played in the previous turn. Then we have the rebuild step. Each player draws cards until they have a four-card hand. And again, if you uh, go through your entire deck and have to draw again, then you have to get a sin card. So I'll draw four cards for each of these people and leave them nearby so we can look at them in a second. Then we have the preparation step, where we each invigorate three, gain three vigor. It's going to put us all at nine. And for the companions, that is their highest vigor value, so we want to make use of that. But for the full champions, it goes up to 12. And additionally, each preparation step is when we're going to take away one of these warm-up cards, put it back in the wound deck, because these are the wounds on the other side. And the companions are going to gain one of their performed actions. So they'll be able to do one of their three cool actions they can use this round. Next round, they'll be able to use two, then three. And they take wounds just like we do. It goes on one of these consistently usable actions, and that'll be locked out until they get healed. And then finally, we get into the taking action steps. And this is free form. We can do activations in whatever order we want. Remember, people can like move as much as they want to. They can do a whole bunch of things. But I'm thinking first, let's just make things simple and have uh, <laughs> have the outlaw who has a three dice, three range weapon, just maybe shoot at the guy. So looking at the outlaw, their longbow says whenever you make an attack, you may take one damage to reroll a die. Remember, damage is just lowering your vigor. Power shot says for two fierceness, make a range attack with a plus one die bonus and precision. Precision, I love. It means that you don't roll the dice. You just get one hit for each die you would have rolled, which uh, with a plus one would be four in this case. 
And because you're not rolling, you can't get those counterattack symbols. So that would just like do a wound to Minos no matter what, and he couldn't uh, react to it. And we've got Nest. You receive Invigorate 2, that means gaining 2 Vigor, and move 2 with Climb, meaning you can go up 1 level without a staircase. The next attack you make above your target this turn receives a plus two die bonus for each board level difference between you. So he just likes to be on, you know, on top of uh, pillars or other fun things. And then long shot, make a range attack with a plus three dice bonus and a limited range. Well, at the moment he is range three from Minos, so I think he's just going to do a power shot. Keep things simple. So one, two, three. What better way to say hi to a king than with an arrow in his face? <laughs> he is in rage. Uh, the elevation does not matter unless an ability says it does. Just for range attacks, though, I will say for melee attacks, you need to be literally in the same area as them. So, like, right now, that is the only place that any of us can go to actually attack this dude. All right, so the outlaw, who is green, got two. So he is now the favorite target of Minos. And he's doing four damage, which is enough to get a wound through. So the topmost card, Brute Force, is discarded. And we don't even check to see what it could have done with a counterattack, because it is just gone unless he restores to heal it back. Then the outlaw can't do anything else because he only had one of those tokens, except for moving. And I think let's go one, two, three. And that's going to get him area one, uh, two. And doesn't really matter where he is as long as he's in the same area. And then for three, he's going to open up this arc, get himself a finding card. And also get him a little bit farther away from the king, get him on higher elevation to shoot at the guy. Just a whole bunch of bonuses here. And what's he get? The Cry of the Indolent. It's a free action. Discard this card to receive your choice of restore one. That means heal one wound away. Or remove all sin cards from your hand. Well, the uh, <laughs> the all sin cards from your hand part isn't going to help because the companions don't have sins. But the one wound will be great. And just a reminder that everyone can hold up to two findings, one miscellaneous artifact, one basic weapon. So the outlaw could hold one more finding at the moment. All right, now I got a fun little combo here. Uh, by the way, this is the devotee. Uh, she has the holy sacrament, two range, three attack. Once per turn is a free action. You may make, uh, take two damage to make a ranged weapon attack with a plus three dice bonus. Oh, I think I'll definitely do that in a second. I also gave her the caduceus. Seemed to make sense as a free action. Spend this to have a champion at any range. Restore one. Again, that's getting rid of one wound. I gave her the essence of your findings to recall one by discarding this, which just means taking a card off of your board and back into your hand. So <laughs> double the joy with that. And then her ongoing abilities I already mentioned. Whenever a champion is about to receive a wound or yield to a sin, you may receive that card in their place and they invigorate three, gain three vigor. And whenever you target another champion with an effect from one of your maneuvers, you gain faith one. And Faith is a type of token you can build up, up to four of them, and as a free action for one Faith, you can give somebody two Vigor, and for four Faith, you can heal somebody of one wound or get rid of one of their sins, called Expiating. And that has a range of up to two areas, by the way, I should have said. Okay, so I've got a fun little combo here. I want to try it out. Um, just to, you know, piss Minos off. There we go. I'm going to compel him. So she's gaining one Ferocity, but she's still way behind. And then first she Invigorates two, that gets her to 11. Perfect place to use her damage to get a free attack. Then the Malefactor moves two towards her. And then you can choose another champion up to two areas away to receive a plus two dice bonus to their next attack. Yeah. Get off your throne here, buddy, and come say hi. So he maintains his uh, facing. He's facing towards her, I should say. And he moves down. So there he is. And then I've actually got kind of a tough choice to make for the plus two die attack because the Cellsword can do a precise strike to do a melee attack with plus one die in precision, which means you don't have to roll, which would get him to four. With the plus two bonus, that would get him to six. He could go up to the throne and hit it. And I think that thing's only got like four wounds, so it's not going to take that much time to just kill it entirely. So we're not getting a double activation every turn. But alternatively, I could give it to the uh, artist. She gets plus two dice for doing a backstab. I was going to play this Mocking Strike that gives her an attack with plus three more dice. So that'd be three, five, eight, ten with the Devotee. But, you know, eight already seems like enough. Yeah, let's have the Self Sword get the plus two bonus. And he's going to activate next. And I'm going to move him one, two, three. Saying what's up to the king and just jumping right up here. The only space that he can fit in front of the throne. And he's going to use his great sword. Oh, wait a second. Whenever you make an attack, you may take one damage to receive a plus two dice bonus before the roll. Never mind. <laughs> we'll say that we are giving the artist the plus two from the devotee's power. He'll take a damage to get plus two. Uh, he's got three from his weapon, so that's five. He is doing a precise strike for one ferocity. And that'll give him plus one in precision. So that's six dice with no roll. 
he is going to the front of the queue. Probably get out of there, Outlaw, where I want him to be. And yeah, the throne has just six health, so boom! How about that, buddy? We got you, uh, got you hurt, got you hurt. Don't even need to roll for it. We will roll finally in a second. Let's get uh, the artist or the devotee. Who do I want to do it? And let's get the artist in here. Okay, so I'm going to do a mocking strike. Move one. Make a melee attack with plus three dice bonus. Move one again. But each of these is its own little like instance or event, which means uh, if she hits him and he reacts, which is a pretty high likelihood she's rolling so many dice, we're going to resolve his reaction and all that kind of stuff. And then she'll move one afterwards. So stuff kind of pauses for the counter attack. All right, but let's see what we got. We got three attack. Uh, six. Oh, she's gaining one for us. I'll do that in a second. Six, eight, because she's going to be in back. After the move one, she's going to be behind him. <laughs> and then uh, two more. So she's going to roll 10 dice. And whenever you make an attack, you may take one damage, add one hit after the roll. We're looking for multipliers of four here. So if she gets to like seven or 11 or three, I'm certainly going to use that ability to get the final hit needed. I'd say, yeah, that gets her to right here. And then for the move one, remember, she just moves one area, but can go to any space. So she'll be on the staircase right behind him. And Lord help us. We don't want to see too many fumbles. Here is our 10 dice attack. That low, my Jesus Yes. <laughs> yes is all I can say. So uh, the bad number for fumbles is two or more. That's what triggers a reaction, a counterattack. We didn't get it. Oh, and we got, look at this, everybody. That's four, four, three. Let's have her take a damage. She use her little ability. Eight, so that'll get us to 12. Dang, I should have gone and attacked the throat. Well, I guess I couldn't backstab the throat, but I would have almost killed the thing in one go. So yeah, she used her dagger ability to take a damage, add one hit, getting us to 12. And that means boom, boom, boom. We got four wounds on this bad boy already. And our objective, by the way, Midas is unwilling to converse and will not understand any language other than that of the battlefield. When he's defeated, we read The Fall of the Judge on page 46 of the Book of Chronicles. All right, so all we got to do is you know, defeat a billion more uh, wounds. We're getting there. We're getting there. Now, important note for the artist in particular, whenever you attack somebody from behind, they do immediately turn to face you. <laughs> so you can't just backstab them over and over and over again. But I don't know, y'all. Are we done? I do have this... Uh... <laughs> I do have this twin strike. Make a melee attack with a plus five dice bonus. Uh, I could jump behind him again for one. And then what does it cost? Improvise. You may play maneuver cards on maneuver slots already occupied by taking one damage for each card in them. I mean, I'm not going down below six, right? I should be okay. So I'm going to move one and then <laughs> improvise a twin strike. Oh my gosh. So the move one in this case is to just get behind him. You can move laterally within the same space for one move. What is this? I think it's the same dang thing again, right? Three plus five, eight plus backstab, ten. Let's go. Although I do not expect my uh, dice luck to be as good as it was at first time. Uh, oh, oh, nope, 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 nope. Let's see at least if I hit. Ooh, okay, I did get some good hits, though. That is uh, four, eight damage. So I will do two wounds. But he is reacting with four fumbles. Now, the rules are changing currently with this. So the rule set they sent me said that they would do one counterattack for every pair of fumbles, which means I would resolve two counterattacks right now. And when you do wounds, it's the same cards that are getting wounded, like you flip them over their counterattack and then discard them. But then with the most up-to-date rule set, which is not what they sent me, they said that just to kind of keep the counterattacks a little bit lower, but more impactful, they're having them do one counterattack for a pair, and every additional die is plus one damage for any of the effects that counterattack causes. So I'm going to try that for now. It's not entirely balanced for the prototype I have, but I figure uh, not having to resolve 50 cards all at once is maybe a little bit better, and it is, again, the way that they're going. So I'm going to do two wounds, uh, but they are counterattacking once first with a plus two bonus. We're going to try that out. Oh, actually, pause for a second, pause for a second. I should have one more vigor. A lot of you will probably already realize this. Because remember my uh, mocking strike? I got to move one afterwards, which means that I could have moved behind him after he turned to face me, and then I wouldn't have had to spend the vigor to get behind for the twin strike. I also, if anybody's keeping track, should have gained uh, two more on the ferocity track. Oh, he wants to kill me. Okay, now back to where we were. So we're going to take the top card and whoa, overwhelm. If Midas is holding any champions, no. Throw the fiercest among them against the farthest pillar at any range, dealing six damage to them and end this counterattack. Nope. Otherwise, move three, approaching the attacking champion. Well, you're, you're here, dude. Okay, and then if there's a champion in this area, hold the fiercest among them, dealing two damage. Okay, so that's going to be dealing four damage, remember, because of 
the uh, change we're trying with the fumble. And then otherwise they would do heavyweight one, which is their basic action where Manos picks up a pillar or heals once. But here he's picking me up and doing four damage. And that card is discarded and so is the next one. So he turns, says, that hurt. Oh, <laughs> wait, come on. <laughs> I'm not sure if they're going to have this like actually. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, no. Ah. Now, four damage. I don't love that. What were these armor reinforcements? Uh, this finding has three charges. Whenever you take damage while this card is in your inventory, reduce that damage by two. Oh, so it's not even a choice. So instead of taking four damage, I'm going to take two. I need a charge tokens. They sent me a lot of stuff. I'm not sure which ones are charge tokens. We're just going to use these extra red ones. So uh, we have three charges. We use one of them to reduce the damage to only two instead of four. So I'm not murderfied. That's great. But I am held now. Now, what I can do is as a character, I can discard a card to stop being held, or I think, I think I might have, no, I thought I had a card that let me escape, but I guess not. Oh, Jesus, you know what I just realized? When I was, when I played the Twin Strike, <laughs> I used my deck of cards. I was, I'd like got confused which one was which. All right, you know, I, I didn't even really look at the other cards I had, so let's just, uh, let's just draw two more cards. Say no harm, no foul, and see. All right, okay, here, here's the one. I did have this, I think, in my original hand. Uh, I can play this. If you are being held, you are released. You move two with climb. You make a range attack with a six dice pool against a malefactor up to two away without considering weapons power, range, or special properties. So that is a question. Should I, like, run away? <laughs> um, I could alternatively just discard a card to get dropped. That's going to accelerate me through my deck, get me closer to sinning, but it is something I could do. Because otherwise he's probably going to, like, throw me and stuff, right? If I wanted to play Escape Artist, I would have to do is Improvise again, and it would knock me down two because I already have two cards. Oh, that seems like too much. And also, I don't think I want to piss him off. You know, let's uh, let's go ahead and I don't know. I'll just discard escape artist. I'm gonna put the discards underneath to save space, just to get dropped where he has me, just so he doesn't do like terrible, terrible things to me. And I'll be uh, I'll be over there on the stairs again. And the only thing I think I want to do at this point is Holy Sacrament. So once per turn, it's a free action. You may take two damage. You make a ranged weapon attack with a three dice bonus, which would be six dice. Devotee on minus. All right, so that uh, two damage. So she's back down to nine. That's right, because her compel actually healed her. I need to get her. She's at the bottom of the uh, fierceness track. I need to get her to the top. So he's attacking her instead of everybody else. But that's six dice. She's like, leave my friend alone. Oh, God. Maybe you should pick her back up again. <laughs> All right, I did get four, so I will take, I will deal one wound. But then I'm getting a uh, counter attack with a plus one bonus. Yeesh. All right, so here we go. This is the wound card and the counter attack card. Tackle. Move three, approaching the closest champion. No, no, not the, she, she's fine. The artist is fine. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, so, so he's like, hey, your friend tried to distract me. I know that trick. I invented that trick. Uh, if there are champions in this area, attack the fiercest one among them, dealing three damage plus, oh God, what was it plus? It was plus uh, one. There were three fumbles. So four damage. Otherwise, you execute heavy, uh, heavyweight one. Great. All right, so that's another armor reinforcement gone and two damage. Thank God she would have already taken a wound otherwise. <laughs> now, when you take your first wound, if you're still warming up, you just flip them from uh, where the warm up thing is. But OK, OK. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else I really want to do. Well, let's look at what his top card is because he is going to activate it. So you do have knowledge of what's coming. OK, brute force. Advance to the nearest area that has a pillar. So there's a few of those. Throw a pillar that is in this area against the fiercest... Ch God, why did I make myself the fiercest champion? Against the fiercest champion at any rage, dealing six damage to them. Uh, if that champion suffered a wound, they gain demoralized. Otherwise, they gain inspired. And then face the champion at whom the pillar was thrown. Ah, <sighs> jeez. Now, what's the throne doing to me? Uh, poise. Minos advances to the throne. So he's going to move over. Oh, he's going to be right in front of the sellsword. Minos faces the foyer, which is directly toward the sellsword. He restores X, X being four minus one for each wound card, sin card, or readiness with wound setup that the champion might have on their champion boards. Oh, geez. So he's going to heal a bunch. I actually want to let him, yeah, I want to let him hurt me, <laughs> the artist, I mean, with that uh, pillar attack, because otherwise he's going to actually heal more. Darn it, I should have should have looked at what was on top. I mean, I, I hurt him a lot, right? Even if he heals three, I did seven damage, so it's less than half of what I dealt, and that was all in the first round, so I can hurt him again. I can hurt him again. All right, so yeah, I guess we're, I guess we're going to stop uh, doing stuff, and we'll just uh, have Minos throw things at us. <laughs> 
All right, so with the end of the uh, taking actions phase, we're going to do activation, activation, activation. You just go down. And these are events. We're just going to flip it up and do what it says. So we'll go one at a time. So brute force. So he advances to the nearest area that has a pillar at any range. I uh, can go to any of these. I'll just say he goes to, I don't know, the big pillar, the small pillar. You can go to the small pillar. And then he throws the pillar at the fiercest champion. Wow, dealing six damage to them. And the pillar is repositioned, collapsed. I forget if a pillar can be on top of a staircase, maybe? Okay, it says uh, it goes into an empty space when it's thrown in the area, so that matters because that space now can't be moved into, and if they throw the big pillars or knock them down, they block two spaces. All right, but she takes six damage, which, oh, you know, I guess, crud, I can't choose not to use the armor, even though it doesn't make a difference. So she's taking four, but it doesn't matter. Any amount of damage, even if like she was at six and she took 20 damage, <laughs> only brings her down to zero, and then she gets a wound, which in this case, we'll just flip over this warm-up card. Internal bleeding. Whenever you would receive invigorate, you gain one less vigor, even during the preparation step. That's great. <laughs> and by the way, if you take any damage while you're at zero, you take another wound, even like one damage from falling a little bit or something. So man, we got to heal that, but not until he finishes this throne activation. Oh, it didn't have something? Yeah, if, uh, if they suffered a wound, they gain demoralized. I think it's this one. And what this means is the next time she attacks, she has to turn one of her single hit faces, not doubles, into a fumble, which, gosh, I don't like that. <laughs> but I'd be demoralized too if a king become basically god threw a pillar at my head. Uh, that would make me feel great. Oh, and then he faces her. That won't matter because he's going to teleport in a second. Now, because that was his activation, it goes underneath, not discarded. Discard is only wounds. And again, he would face her, but instead the throne is doing poise. Minus advances to the throne, faces the foyer, and restores X, which is four minus one for each wound, sin, or readiness with wound. I think those are these, uh, yeah, yeah, these companion things. So for each of those, he's going to restore one less. So basically he's healing three. He's like, how dare you attack my throne? Power up. And I think it says the top three cards go to the bottom, I want to say. Hey, it'll work. And we ain't done because we got events. Open the session. The court is in session once more. The lost soul's lament echoes as a Nania outside the throne room. Echoes as a ne Okay. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Uh, draw four Arcana cards. What? He's getting four more life with a... Oh, gosh, my nose. Uh, store this card when you finish it. Okay, so this is gone. He's got another event. I'm not sure what that'll be. Right, but I drew four random arcana. So we got the lovers, wheel of fortune, the magician, and the moon hanging out with, oh, it was near the top, the poet. We'll, we'll see what they are when we get to them. By the way, for these, they're still being developed in balance. So this could very much change. But for now, when these uh, become counterattacks, you just resolve them the exact same way. They don't have a different side. So yeah, we did seven damage and Minos got seven life back and he hit us for one wound out of our 12. Everything's great. Everything's great. We're going to heal that wound. It's going to be fine. And actually, I should say, do you remember these tokens that we didn't use during the uh, campaign uh, story mode? The willpower ones can be used when you're about to get a wound or a sin. And they just prevent you getting that wound or sin. I didn't want to do that in this case because it would have just meant that he healed less. And I think we can heal her eventually. But that's a good one to know. And then the aggressiveness ones can just straight up hurt him. Or I think, I think yeah, I think it's her only hurt the Malefactor. So like I couldn't use it on the throne. But if I see like the card on top when he's about to activate is just terrific, I could use those. And then finally, the prowess. I think it's prowess. Uh, these ones can be used. You take one damage, but you can recall one, which again brings a card back into your hand and empties out the space. So you need to spam away, baby. Spam away. All right, so let's actually look at what the throne's going to do this time. Each champion standing on ground level takes three damage. Minus restore is one for each champion that does not see on ground level. I freaking hate this throne. I got to kill this damn throne here. All right, so we are cleaning up to get into round two. Those cards are gone. Oh, man, she's going to go through her hole deck and get a sin and be even more messed up very soon. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Ooh, just remembered, I've got the Caduceus. I can uh, heal her in a second. There we go. Okay, so that was clean up. Then we rebuild. Now, she doesn't take a sin until she needs to draw another card. So even though her, uh, her deck is now empty, she's not taking a sin yet. Okay, now, very importantly, we get uh, some preparation, which unfortunately means she only gets two vigor. But the Devotee is all the way up to 12. We got to get her doing some more stuff. Mercenaries at eight and outlaws at nine cool okay then also we get a second thing so now our buddies can do twice as much i guess this is weird um like 
Does she get another warm up remove? Does she unlock stuff? I'm not sure. Does she does she like warm up faster because she took a wound? Let's just say she does, because I don't really know. And that is it. And here's the big thing. Artis is still the fiercest, and I do not want her to be. So I want her to like do all her stuff, but maybe not like attacks and make people angry at her. And then I want her to get the heck out of Dodge. Alright, so let's uh let's first have the devotee use the Caduceus, uh, so spend this card to have a champion at any range receive Restore 1. So this is just shuffled back into the deck or put in a discard pile, I'm not sure. And spend this means this is flipped down. We still have it for next time. It's, it's an ongoing artifact thing, but we can't use it anymore right now. And again, should uh, she still have a warm-up? No idea. <laughs> for now, we won't worry about it. I mean, you know what? I do have a good little combo here. I'm going to do switcheroo. You and another champion at any range swap positions on the board. The next attack you make this turn receives a plus two dice bonus. The next attack that champion makes this turn receives a plus two dice bonus. Playing that first, that would increase her, uh, what's it called again? Uh, Rageist? In Enrageist? Vengeaneist? Fiercest! Fiercest! That'll increase her fierceness, but she's already at the top. And she's going to swap whoop, whoop, with the devotee, so she's three away. And remember, she's got a plus two attack to her next attack, and so does the devotee. We'll have to remember that. But now she's going to do, look at this. Uh, where is it? <laughs> Performance. Copy a maneuver of your choice that is on another champion's board or on a companion. It'll have the same effects, have the same fierceness. And if it's an attack, you use their weapon instead of your own. So she's somehow acting <laughs> with the power of acting like she has a bow. We'll just say she's throwing a dagger. <laughs> and she's doing a longbow attack because she does not want to get counterattacked. Please, God, don't let her get counterattacked. So uh, she's going to do a power shot which would normally make her fierceness plus two, but it doesn't matter because she's already at the top. Plus one die in precision. She already has plus two. That brings her to six dice. You know what that magic number is for. That's right. You die, you stupid throne. You only got two more life left, man. You're not going to bother me anymore. What is your next activation anyway? Uh, each player champion discards all maneuver cards in their hands. These champions take X damage, X being three minus one for each card they discarded. Each companion just takes three damage. God, I don't like this thing. But I know that the other one that heals the dude a billion <laughs> is the very next one. So I either need to like be ready to do two uh, strong hits or uh, zero, I think. Although, I bet between the Cell Sword and the Devotee with her bonus, I bet we can take it out. All right, and last thing for the artist. Then, oh, crud, crud. Wait. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, that's only if she rolls a die and gets a hit, it becomes a fumble. I don't think that applies to an attack where you never rolled. So we're going to say that she still has that demoralized thing. I'm going to finally play Stagehand. She gets Invigorate 3. That's really what I cared about. <laughs> and then while this maneuver is on the board, other champions may consider you as if you are stairs. And if they use you to move up, they get a plus 2 dice bonus. I don't think that's going to happen at all, y'all. I just really wanted the plus 3 uh, Vigor. So <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. And she's going to sit her butt off because she's going to... Uh, she's not going to cut purse anybody right now. She's just going to uh, be drawn in a second. All right, so DVT has got a plus two attack. I want to get to enough to hurt the throne. Um, ooh, the next attack that you or another champion is up two areas away makes the turn receives precision. And then what's her thing? It's three. If she takes two damage, six. That would be eight. That would actually be enough to hit Minos twice. Uh, does she have anything else? Ooh. This maneuver can only target a malefactor that is counterattack this round. You make a range attack with a plus three dice bonus and precision. Be dang good. Sacred Vigil. You or another champion is up to two areas away, takes one damage, and receives recall one. You can't recall this maneuver. Okay, these are these are good boosting things. But she's got she's got uh vigor out the wazoo. I kinda wanna get her to be the angriest. Maybe I let somebody else go first. Sure, sure, sure. Cell Sword is right in front of Minos, and I don't think there's anything saying he can't still attack the throne while Minos is on it. He'll just be like, hey, your chair sucks, dude. Hit it with a sword. <laughs> um, so let's do Precise Strike. You make a melee attack with a plus one die. That makes him the fiercest. Thank God it's not the artist. And what was the thing? Take one damage to receive plus two dice roll. So that'll get him to plus one plus. Yeah, that'll get him to six. So boom. What now thrown? And that's the stupid car. We're going to kill it. Can he do it? Uh, what's he got? Fit of Rage. You make a melee attack with a plus one die bonus. Afterwards, you make a sequ sequential melee attack for each wound you have. I'm guessing that just means another one. Does it still have the plus one bonus? I'm not sure. I'll have to look up what sequential means. Okay, it is checked. You don't get any bonuses that apply to the first die roll, but they can each target different targets. So, hey, that's cool. Uh, but not really useful until he's, uh, you know, actually done something. <laughs> uh, taken some wounds. Ooh, provoke. You receive invigorate four. 
dang, he can just like get all the health, can he? He is a tanky tank. All right, but you know what? I just want to kill that throne before we do anything else. Um, and I think Devotee can do it. She's going to use her Holy Sacrament. So that'll be uh, two damage to herself. It's a three dice plus her plus two bonus. So five. Oh, and that's a plus three. So that's six, eight dice. So a little bit overkill. And you know what? Whatever. The next attack, you or another champion that's up two areas away makes his turn and receives precision. Let's just not even give it a chance to react. I don't want to see what its counterattacks look like. I just want her to go up here a little bit. That's eight. Boom. I, what happens now? Do I kill it? Minos, you sit on a throne alive, sir. <laughs> Take that, buddy. <laughs> Fall to the ground. <laughs> I just, yeah, I wish I could like give him falling damage. It doesn't technically count as a higher level, but that'd be hilarious. All right. All right. This is great. This is everything I wanted to happen and more. I haven't even hurt him this turn, but you know what? He ain't getting his chair. And you know what? It's been a minute for the outlaw. Let's get him in the action. A uh, long shot. Look, shot. Uh, you make a range attack with a plus three dice bonus and unlimited range because he's now way away. Oh, God, I think he's five away because he has to count orthogonally. <laughs> but uh, that's going to be enough. So that's six dice. Three plus three is six. And what's his bow do again? Make an attack. He may take one damage to reroll a die. Heck yeah. We'll probably be doing that with any fumbles we get. Yeah, so to show you what I was talking about, you have to measure orthogonally. So one, two, three, four, five. See, that's uh, how far away he is. All right, and six dice. Jesus, he's taking a damage to reroll this dice. Yay! Okay, so still a counterattack, but with no bonus. And he'll do the wound. All right, let's see what this guy's got. Tackle! Move three, approaching the closest champion. That's a sellsword. It is not the artist. We like that. Um, if there are champions in this area, um, attack the fiercest one among them, dealing three damage. Okay, so this is a three damage attack. That's not too bad. And then that is gone. That's a wound. So, boom! Oh! He goes down to four, but he can vigorate back up to uh, four again. This would be his final activation, but I still have a card I can play for the devotee. And I still can do maybe a power shot or nest. Although the nest just boosts in attacks. I don't really want to do that. What can the DVT do? Ooh, she could debilitate him. That means the next time he would activate, it knocks him down and he just like has to stand back up. That's pretty dang good. That's pretty dang good, I think. Maybe I'll do that. I don't need to recall right now. Oh, did he? He just counterattacked, didn't he? He just counterattacked. What does this do? Um, you make a range attack with a plus three dice bonus and precision. So that would do a single automatic wound because three plus three is just six. Or do I just want to cancel his next activation? Hmm. Maybe the question is, how bad is his next card? Oh, it's the Brute Force one again. So he goes and gets a pillar, and he throws it for six. <laughs> God, six. <laughs> um, although it's the fiercest right now is the Cell Sword. He has four Vigor. If I use his ability, he'd have eight, so he wouldn't even flinch at it. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I like that. I like that. So let's... Uh... Wait, well, what am I saying, though? I just realized if she debilitates him, he won't activate. If she wounds him, he won't activate with that guy. Yeah, I don't even know why I'm looking at this. Dang it. Whatever. I want to kill him. She's going to do Punish the Wicked. She's going to get a six dice attack with precision. It's going to move her in front of the artist. I don't mind that at all. And that's her second uh, spot since she already used her free action. So she's not going to do much more. And that's six with precision. So two are wasted. And now a hall is on top. I don't like the sound of that. All right. I think... I do want to have him provoke since he's still the uh, the main target, but I'm going to have this guy do a power shot. It's got to get within three. And then what is it? It's Oh, it's that's right. It's with precision. So I'll just do a wound. So to get within three, I guess one, two, that'd be close enough. I just hope we don't get like any area of effect attacks going here. So that gets him down to six. Then he does the power shot, which is going to move him up two. So the artist is at the back, which is beautiful. And yeah, he does one wound with precision. You ain't never going to counter attack. Whoops, another haul. Didn't matter. Where are all those arcana cards is the question. And then the cell sword is going to use provoke. He stays at the front. Goes to eight. And then the devotee actually has too much. <laughs> like she's going to go, uh, if she regains three, she's going to get it all back. Well, who knows? Maybe uh, something will happen. Let's see what the hall does. Who knows? Maybe he'll maybe he'll throw the cell sword at the devotee. If there are any champions in this area, oh, hold the fiercest. Yep. And then if Minos is holding any champions, face the farthest champion. Oh, God, the farthest. Uh, that's <laughs> the outlaw and the artist. Move three with trample two in a straight line. And for each character or furniture space that is trampled, deal two damage to each champion that is held. Oh my gosh. So we want to... So the, he's going to pick up the cell sword. And then he's going to face the farthest champions. And he's going to move three trampling for each furniture space. 
or character that is trampled deal two damage to each champion that is held. Okay. Okay. I think trampling like destroys stuff. Okay. So this is actually pretty good. You can't trample staircases. That is checked. And I don't think you can trample pillars that are already broken because it would break them. So if I get one of them back to still be the farthest champion and then move the rest of them just like out of the way one, he should just charge straight ahead and do basically nothing. I like that a lot. So Mercenary will stay where he is because uh, he's fine. <laughs> But Devotee will jump down here for one. That gets her to nine, so now she'll fully recover. Um, Artist will, I guess, go over here for one. Leaves her at four. And then the Outlaw at five will go over here and be like, come get me. We're going to stop there. This guy picks up the Outlaw. Ooh! And then, oh, you can't even see it. Ooh! <laughs> you still can't see it. Ooh! <laughs> and then... Um, he faces the farthest champion, and then he's going to go brah, 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 and not accomplish anything. And he doesn't drop him either, so he's going to have to use a card or something. Okay, and that goes to the bottom. Still a lot of deck to get through, but we're going to read this second event card. All right, and here we go. Thundering Entrance. Concerned about the outcome of the battle, Pasiphae steps out of the shed. Oh my gosh, am I going to have another enemy? <laughs> and intervenes. The caravan shall confront one more opponent of this encounter. Well, thank God I killed the throne. Uh, each champion that is standing on ground level discards two maneuver cards from their hand. Ah. Wait, uh, small favors. The artist only had one. And the devotee had two, so there they both go. Okay, then each champion that is not standing on ground level takes two damage. Huh. It didn't mention companions at all, so since it didn't, I don't know, I'll just have them take two damage. That seems fair, since they can't discard any cards. Okay, read entry, The Black Widow, on page 45. Pacifate does not activate during this turn, and then that card's gone. Okay, so no more surprise events. Not that we need them, but we got a friggin' uh, six card, five defense. <laughs> That's worse than the throne, man. All right, here we go, The Black Widow. Cordiality gives way to blood, as you realize that the judge of hell does not intend to do his duty. To the poet's surprise, such transgression yields no immediate punishment from either side, heaven or hell. Does the Almighty look the other way? Or worse, does the devil? Even though the once king proves to be an excellent warrior, the numbers are in your favor, for you are not mere recruits either. It is at this moment that the cunning woman steps out of the shadows and joins the fight. Her eyes glitter like twin thunderbolts crackling with supernatural power. Husband! She shouts as she floats a foot off the ground, her hair waves as if she is a storm personified. Allow me to remove such scum from our manor, for I cannot bear to sit still while they attempt to harm your majesty. Truth be told, you did not expect to face a sorceress. All right, so she's going to start in the foyer. Um, and if the caravan has the imposter exposed discovery card, read the additional scene, Confessions of a Dying Man. Oh, cool. So if I had discovered something, something cool would have happened. Dang it, and I did it. <laughs> I had no clues there even was a queen, let alone that she was in, in did it say imposter. Imposter exposed. Oh, she must be not the queen. I don't know. But yeah, I had a hint she was coming, or at least like she had the possibility to come, because there she is in all her flowy, flyy glory, I guess. All right, so I can defeat her, but it ha nothing has changed with my actual objective. I still defeat Minos. I'm good, but let me see what kind of stuff she's doing. Let's see what her top card is. Thunderbolt. Move two, approaching the farthest champion at any range. Face the least fierce champion at any range. Launch a Thunderbolt, attacking each champion in a straight line, dealing three damage to each of them. Oh, God, and each champion discards the top two cards from the top of their maneuver deck. And if she didn't hit anybody, Minus restores one health. That's that's annoying. It's not like as much damage as him, but it's definitely annoying. Oh, but I do still have all of those tokens. Although, again, I think I can only use the red one to uh, hit Minos, but I could use... The green one lets me recall if I take a damage. I could use that to, like, spam a bunch of attacks on the queen, maybe. Oh, and crud, you know, I forgot all about martyrdom. I could have had the devotee take the wound instead of the artist, and that would have invigorated the artist three, so she wouldn't have been in such a desperate position. I got to remember that uh, next time we come up with some damage. All right, but first, we are discarding some stuff. Oh, my gosh, so many cards. And then the devotee is going to draw two get one sin card and one regular card because she is reshuffling. All right, and let's look at how these works. Remember, she doesn't have to use this. She can just leave this in her hand, but uh, she can abstain. When the malefactor comes to the area you are in, you move three. You can spend one of those movement points to interact with a furniture that is in this or in the area you move to. Adjust your vigor to its initial value. Oh, so that's like the, the one where you give in. So this would just go onto your board. And this one is resist. 
Okay. Oh, indolence. Is that the is that the the sin? Um, so she would get minus three. I guess that's uh, the terming. Which oh god, what is it? Fiercest, fiercest. I got it this time. To resist a sin, you must discard a maneuver card from your hand. Uh, at the beginning of the malefactor's turn during this round, remove this sin from your champion board. That one's not too hard to get rid of. Okay. Meanwhile, the artist had nothing in her deck, so she is getting one sin and three cards. Now let's see. Karmic justice. When a malefactor's activation or counterattack is about to cause damage to you, block the damage such an effect would cause to you and cause the same amount of damage to the malefactor responsible for it. Heck yeah! Sin is great! Um, or, to resist a sin, you must discard a maneuver card. Oh. Are they all the same, I wonder? Let me, let me look. Let me look real quick. Yeah, I just looked, and so far all of them are the same. But this is also the limbo deck, so maybe like they're all simple for the first circle. I don't know. But yeah, man, this Karmic Justice card is so dang good. <laughs> uh, does she have any way to attack? Uh, she's got. Uh, she can make a ranged attack. She can do a melee attack and get a finding, or she can switch with somebody to get a bonus attack. What's the OT got? Oh, she's got compel again to move um, the person or join the fray. You are another champion that's up to two areas away and make an attack with a plus three dice bonus. That's awesome. Or winds of salvation. You are another champion that is up to two areas away, receives invigorate two and inspired. Oh man, and inspired. I think is the opposite of this one. In fact, it would get rid of that one on the artist. I might just use it on her, but it also lets you change a fumble into a hit, uh, I believe. But yeah, we got that. Let's uh, give everybody three vigor back. And yeah, I guess the uh, <laughs> the cell sword didn't actually get hurt, really, so he's still doing fine. Oh, but yeah, I definitely... <laughs> I want to have the advantage in numbers. I think I want to try to take out the sorceress, maybe. Or maybe I just maybe I just ignore her. Because, like, here, if I just let her hit one of us for three damage, she won't heal him. She won't do anything else. Oh, I guess she does make them discard two cards. But, yeah, I mean, like, that's that's barely anything, right? So maybe I just ignore her and just keep going to the dude's face. Well, first, let's do something simple. I don't want the outlaw to be uh, <laughs> at the front. So while he's close to there, I'm going to have him do um, a power shot which is a four precision attack. And he does go in front of the cell sword for a second. And you cannot attack someone with a range attack if they're in your space, but next to you is fine. So he'll do that. Ooh, ooh, we got one of these arcana cards. Magician, the fiercest champion and the least fierce switch positions on the board and on the fierceness track. The two champions who are not the fiercest or the least fierce are demoralized and the boss restores one. I don't love any of that. Yeah, so let's get rid of that. Let's have uh, the Cell Sword. He has to to make the Minos drop him, kind of like I would have to discard a card. He has to just cover up one of his things for no effect. I don't think he needs to Invigorate 4 again, right? He's pretty much at full health. And then he'll do his Precise Strike to get rid of that card with no retaliation. Boom! I think maybe we're halfway through the deck now. Oh yeah, I guess I should uh, <laughs> have him actually drop me. All right, you know what? I want to bring the Artist back in. She, she's pretty healed up. I'm going to do Escape Artist. So if she was being held, she would be released. She can move to with Climb. And then she can make a range attack with a six dice pull against a malefactor up to two areas away. It says this attack does not consider your weapon's power, range, or special properties. But it doesn't say that I don't get the plus two bonus for backstabbing. So maybe she doesn't move from where she is. She just attacks him from there. All right, well, sure. Let's go ahead and try it. So that's going to increase her, uh, what's going to call it by one? Her fierceness. She's fierce. And she can move up to two with climb, which means she can go up a uh, level one thing. And she and she can do a two area six dice attack range. But I just want to make sure she's in long or uh, in rear range. I don't know. I think this does count as rear arc because they talk about like a forward arc for when they're facing you. So this seems like it would be facing away from him. Maybe we'll find out. <laughs> so I'm doing eight dice. Oh, shoot, shoot, shoot. She's still got her, like, turn a hit into a fumble thing. Let's go ahead and uh, do some words of salvation uh, from, yeah, because she was, oh, wait, crud. Was she two areas away? No, she wasn't. So, yeah, before all this happens, I'll have the DVOT move one closer to uh, here, one away from where these uh, artists was before she moved. Then she'll play words of inspiration. So that'll get rid of the uh, debilitation and give the artist plus two vigor. And then yada, 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 eight dice attack. Well, the thing that is said, that's friggin' good. Yeah, artist. That is two wounds, no retaliation. Okay, boom, boom. Oh my God, there are so many Arcana cards coming. <laughs> and you know what? Whatever, artist is doing it. I'm going to recall one with Karen's rags, get the escape artist back, play that stuff again. Oh, I guess he did face toward me. Either one of those would face toward... Oh, no, no, this one. Yeah, you can see that that's the only one that's actually in the front arc. Um, cool. And then when she does escape artist again, she can move 
two. So once again, I think she's in the back. And oh man, she's way above on the rage track. I don't love that part. It's fine. It's fine. She's not going to die. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> that's just one wound. Uh, she can't use her knife and actually wouldn't be enough anyway. And then uh, counterattack with plus one damage. This card will be the one overwhelm. If Minus is holding any champions, throw the fears. Okay, no. Otherwise, move three, approaching the attacking champion. Whoops. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Okay, hold the fiercest among them, dealing two damage. Ah, not again. <laughs> Let me go. And what was that? Uh, it was two plus one, three damage. All right, we can do that. We're, we're fine. We're fine. Oh, I could. No, Karmic Justice would be a waste here. It's only three damage, which wouldn't even be enough to move him or uh, wound him. Uh, so I guess I really don't like using Cut Purse. It moves her to be the fiercest. So I'm going to go ahead and discard that to drop out of his hold before he throws me. Even though, yes, it would be way more fun if he did do that. And then, ooh, the moon arcana's on top. What's this? At the farthest, the champion is four areas or more away from this malefactor. Each champion takes two damage, and those champions must move one, approaching the malefactor. Otherwise, malefactor deals two damage to each champion, and the champions receive push one. So it's just two damage either way, and we either move closer or move away. Okay. You know what I want to do? I want to do some sellsword actions. We're going to have the sellsword move two to get in here behind him. Why not? And then not the sellsword, but... The devotee is going to play Joy in the Fray. You are another champion that's up to two areas away and make an attack with a plus three bonus if possible. It is possible. Anything is possible. Oh, man, this is going to make the cell sword so far behind. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, so what is this? Cell sword's attacking. He's going to take a damage for plus two um, and plus three from her. Show it over here. So what is that? That's three, six, eight. Nice. Eight seems to be the magic number. Wait, this is more than... No, that is eight. Okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, my God. Okay, well, at least we got a wound. We also got a return attack with plus two. Oh, shoot. Why didn't I think of this? This is going to do all the damage. we die. <laughs> so the moon is gone, but it's hitting every champion for four, right? It, I, again, this is... Uh, <laughs> by the original rules, I would have resolved the next two cards, the moon and the lovers. But um, by the like rules that might be revised this way, that really my copy is not meant for. It's doing plus two damage, which I think is going to be plus two to everybody. So that's four damage to everyone. And they're all not four areas away. They're all within three. So they're all going to get pushed away one. Okay. Boom. Uh, boom. Oh, my God. We're so dead. This was a bad idea. Okay. Uh, actually, the Diva T's fine. She's, she's sitting pretty. And yeah, pushed away one. I'm guessing this means we have to, like, go to the area exactly. Uh, I guess that is a way. And then, oh, man. Outlaw is saying hi. Let's look at what the Thunderbolt does again. <laughs> Just remind myself. Okay, move two, approaching the farthest champion. So she would go to there. And then she's going to face the least fierce champion, which is currently the Cell Sword. So she would face that way. And then launch a Thunderbolt, attacking each champion in a straight line, dealing three damage to each of them. So she would just hit the Cell Sword with this currently, which I'm fine with. Because he could still attack with his Fit of Rage, but to do that, he'd have to... Yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> but crud, what is this Lover's card going to do? The Caravan chooses two champions at any range to move two towards each other, attempting to occupy the same area so they're falling in love. If there are areas occupied by exactly two champions, the Malefactor advances to one of them. Otherwise, the Malefactor restores to an end this action. Malefactor attacks each champion in this area, dealing four damage to each. Uh, okay. So if I... If I can get them far enough away, he'll just heal two, which is, like, not great, but could be worse. Otherwise, he's going to do four damage to each. I mean, I guess if I make it the devotee and somebody else, I can use one of these willpower tokens to cancel the wound that the one takes. Or I can make it the cell sword. They sort of like being wounded, right? All right, but you know what? What the heck? I'm going to do compel. So I'm going to pull him two to me. Hi. And I'm just going to shoot him. You know, maybe, maybe the lovers won't go off. Uh, <laughs> so I get... Plus two dice bonus to my next attack. I'm going to do my Holy Sacrament. Oh, that healed me too. Then I'm going to spend two to do the bonus attack. So I'm getting plus three on that. That's six. That's eight attack. Keeping my sin. Hey. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. Uh, I can't attack him right now, can I? I got to move away one first because uh, she cannot do... Because she can't do a melee attack. She has to do range. All right. So that gets her to six vigor, but it's fine. It's fine. And... Oh, no. Oh, no. God, no. 
Uh, shoot, I don't have a reroll or anything. All right, so I'm going to... I don't want to move the cell sword because that's like going to do for the, the Thunderbolt thing. So let's have uh, them move towards each other. Oh, I love you, outlaw. I love you too, devotee. What's your name? I don't know. Um, <laughs> okay, and then the Malefactor advances to that space. Hi. And then he attacks each of them for four plus three, seven damage. So the outlaw just goes down to zero. She goes down to zero. But let's go and use two willpower to not take the wounds, I guess. Because they're probably about to hit us again in a second. Ugh. She didn't even hurt him. She didn't even hurt him, people. Oh, this is bad. Okay, what do I do now? Crap, now I have a new thing on top. Uh, each player champion discards all maneuver cards from their hand, which, okay, is this one card for the... Uh, the artist, maybe she should just use it. And then each player champion rebuilds their hand. Oh, and they deal one damage each champion for each card they draw this way. Uh, the good thing is we still have our sin, so it's only be three damage, but that's still going to be enough for a wound for each of us. Crud. Well, so so it goes. So it goes. Every, everything's fine. Everything's fine here now. How are you? Great. <laughs> okay. Actually, you know what? I, I can lessen the bleeding a little bit. I'm going to use her finding to recall one, get back her words of salvation, uh, she's going to pick the cell sword that is within two areas, invigorate him too, which is just enough for him not to take a wound from the lightning attack. And then he's inspired for the next time he attacks. Cool. All right, but then I think that's it, Lord. So Midas is doing this fun thing. So the artist discards her card and then they each rebuild their hand and they each take a damage. I guess, again, I don't know what happens to companions. I just won't worry about it this time. The artist takes three. The devotee takes three. Neither of them got to drawing a new sin yet. And then I guess we'll use our last two willpower. I don't know if we need to hang on to these for like the next mission. So maybe it's bad that I'm doing this, but boom, uh, no wounds quite yet. Okay, and then let's make sure I'm doing this right. Uh, she moves two toward the farthest champion, which is them. So, oh, where, do, where does she go? Maybe she stops. Does she switch? With, I think it said maybe they switch with them. I don't want to look up the rules right now. I'm right in the middle of this. <laughs> so we're just going to say they switch with them. I think that's what happens. Okay, and then target the least fierce champion, which is the cell sword, And three damage, attack. And he has to discard two cards, which I don't know what that means when he's not a full champion. We're going to pretend it means nothing, and he just takes three. Yay! And we survive for another round. All right, so the discarding part is easy here. We don't have to draw any more for my characters because they already have cards. The part I'm very happy about is plus three. Getting all our abilities back, although uh, three is not a lot to survive any kind of attack. Speaking of attacks, let's see what we got. Remove the scum. Advance to the area with the farthest champion. She just likes to rush at us. If there are any arcs on the board, throw the fiercest champion in this area against the farthest arc at any range. <laughs> there are three of them left. Otherwise, minus and pacifate each restore one and end this action. Remove the arc from the board. For each area of distance the champion was thrown, they take two damage. That would be like eight. Although I guess, oh no, it is the farthest arc. So unless we like just, we don't have enough vigor to run around collecting things. Ah, oh, that one sucks. <laughs> Crud. How much, how much more does this guy have? Eight. He's got eight life left. We can do three automatically. So we got to hit him five more times. We can do that. We can do that. All right, so I just want I just want to wait on this guy. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna make this happen somehow. Uh, let's start with the artist. Um, okay, I've got the performance. I got an idea for this. I'm going to uh, copy a maneuver of your choice that's on another person, and I'm gonna copy kind of silly the nest one. So that's gonna move her up one, and she invigorates two, which gets her to five. That part's lovely, and she moves two because she didn't actually have enough <laughs> move to get anywhere. That'll get over here. She could climb up, but she's just trying to get into melee range. Then she's going to spend the two vigor she got to get right behind our friend. And then where is the DBT? You had something I wanted. There we go. Uh, DBT is going to bless her. Next attack is precision. And she's, yeah, one area away, so that's fine. I'll swap again. With the DBT's blessing, we're going to do a twin strike, which is five, eight, ten for backstab. Uh, and precision. So, okay, it's a little bit overkill. We got two more dice than we need, but that's fine. So he does turn to face us, but he gets two cards gone. Oh, there's the poet one where if we're all in a line, which we are, we would actually get a good thing, but I don't care. I'm going to kill him. Well, actually, no, I guess it is good. If he counterattacks me right now, I'll actually get the bonus because we're all in a line. So, yeah. All right, and now mocking strike. Um... I definitely messed up here. She's supposed to be at the front, right? Okay, Mocking Strike. She's going to move, make a melee attack with plus three, and then move again. And the move will just be, ha ha ha, behind you. 
And plus three, backstab, all of that. She's at magic number eight. And, okay, that looks pretty good. Four and eight. Beautiful. And he's reacting, but it's with the poet. Again, I think these cards are changing, but for now it's great. If each champion is in a different... Oh, and each area is a different area. Wait, freaking hold on, hold on. I totally read that. I totally knew that was the case. Uh, one move and <laughs> two moves. Okay, and then it works. <laughs> Yeah, so they each uh, expiate one. That means get rid of a sin if they have it from their hand or from their board and gain inspired, which again, I think is the thing that lets us change a miss to a hit or a fumble to a hit. But that's uh, hurt and that's hurt. He's got four cards left. He's dead. He's dead. Yeah, so they're all inspired. Their sins are washed away. And, oh my gosh. Dang it, y'all. Altruism. Whenever you target another champion with an effect from one of your maneuvers, I've done that like 50,000 times. You gained faith one. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot about that. I would definitely have at least the four I could use to get rid of a sin or a wound automatically. Whatever. It's fine. It's fine. All right. So that was kind of all the artists has got. We got to do at least one more wound and then we can just aggress him to death, at least with the current way that's working. They did say they're going to weaken those things. You can't just like finish the battle with them. Oh, that's right. He's turning. Um, although actually, <laughs> let's just get the artist wounded. I think it's funny. I'm going to use a prowess. Give her a damage to recall her twin strike. She's going to spend one to move in her same space to get behind him again. Because Artis is like my real character here, right, everybody? And she's going to attack Twin Strike. Uh, so this is 10 dice with the backstab bonus. And she's inspired. And she can take a damage to add a hit. Although she's already at one. So does that mean she would wound herself? Maybe. Let's see what happens. All right. Oh, that was good. And with the inspire, bloop. Two, four, eight. Okay, we don't need to worry about the dagger, whether it works or not. So that's... Two more wounds, and then, I don't know, aggress, aggress. <laughs> Anticlimactic way to end it. Again, that's being changed already, but not in my current version. No! Oh, oh, my husband, or my fake husband, oh! All right, and let's read what happens to Minos. Minos left you no choice but to fight him, and so you did. The Judge of Hell is a formidable opponent, but how the caravan fights, having chosen such different kinds to form it, has started to make sense as not even one who once made Greece fear is able to defeat you. That is enough, your excellency! The poet shouts to intervene before it would be the final blow, which one of you is about to deliver. We have come to investigate a transgression with the blessing of the high power not to commit slaughter, the Florentine argues as Minos regroups. Slaughter, the former king laughs. You cannot finish me, mortal. In his eyes, I am but a convict like those I sentence. As soon as I die, I rise again. Unlike you, souls cannot truly die in hell. Everything in this place is meant to be cyclic and eternal in such a way that even kindness becomes torture. However, I do acknowledge defeat, continues the judge looking at his wife. A legion passed and no devil dared intervene. How far they have gone, I do not know, nor who might have brought them here. But this I do know. The high power would rather you go after them, he concludes, becoming aware that he has aroused his wife's fury. Husband, how could you? Pasiphae protests, eager to resume the fight. You offer safe conduct to my men as a dowry only to betray them? Leave it be, woman. They won the battle and deserve tribute. These are the ways. They shall carry on with their task, and you shall stay by my side while we do ours, which, for our enjoyment, we have neglected. Minos responds by evoking the patriarchal authority he had in his day. Thus, as suddenly as it began, the fight ends and Minos grants you passage into the second circle, promising to restore the order he let crumble. The best outcome you could have wished for. Okay, if the caravan has the Pledge of Redemption, nope. <laughs> I'm missing all the optional cool stuff. Congratulations! We have won! All right, so... Very early prototype. Let's talk about what I like so far and what I hope they work on. And again, I know they are already working on stuff. Already the version I am playing is out of date. So a lot of the stuff I'm going to say is probably redundant, but I think it's still worth saying. So first, what do I like? This is one of those boss battlers, dungeon crawlers where you do cool stuff. You know, it's not just basic attacks most of the time. It is exciting attacks. It is cool powers. It is combos. It is card choices. I think all of that is great. And uh, honestly, uh, you know, looking at this now, I wish I had even used more full characters because the companions are fine. But really, like the stuff I was doing with the devotee, even though I was forgetting half of her bonuses <laughs> with altruism or uh, with the artist going ham on people like that was a blast. I really like the uh, the card play here. 
you know, reminds me of the good ones. Something like Oathsworn or Gloomhaven, a little bit simpler, maybe. You know, I have like the whole cooldown system or like having to make combos of pairs of cards in your hand. But the actions are exciting. Love that. The vigor management is also interesting that it is your kind of resource, but also your life. Uh, reminds me of what's the one that I really like uh, the Conan games from Monolith. I think it is, you know, they have a similar system where you can like move as much as you want, but that's the same thing that's going to keep you from getting hurt. So I think that's a cool system. And that combined with this fierceness track uh, seems like gives you a lot of options and flexibility, a lot of cooperation. It seems like a very cooperative battler. You know, I was playing solo, obviously, but a lot of uh, ways to cooperate, lots of ways to help each other. I mean, you saw clearly the devotee was helping a whole bunch. But even the artists had ways to help. I didn't see as much for these guys. They were more just like kind of tanking and hurting. But I'm sure with their full decks, they would have uh, ways to like cooperate with each other too. So I thought all of that was great too. I, I kind of like what I'm doing quite a lot. What the enemies are doing is fun too. Now, I know, I get the sense, and I think one of the publishers or designers said this to me, that they're supposed to be counterattacking more than you saw in this preview. And... I really think the consequence of, or sort of the reason for that is these guys right here. The fact that maybe this is just how I picked my characters, but I had power shot and precise strike. Both could consistently every turn do a precision wound, right? And then I was like copying their attacks with the artist and giving more precision with the devotee. So I think with the real characters, these, I think these precision things, let me check real quick. Yeah, the Cell Sword only has one attack that has precision. Then he has to go through his whole deck to get back to that. And it looks like, do, 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 there's the clear shot. And yeah. Yeah, so they each, oh wait, there's two. Okay, so he might have two with precision. But either way, very few of their attacks are with precision. They're going to have to go through a whole bunch of cars to get back of them uh, to them. So they might do precision like once every three or four rounds, you know? Here I was doing it every turn, copying with other people. And I think the, the heart of like kind of the craziness of the game is in more counterattacks happening as much as that hurts. <laughs> so I think the fact that I could like precision so much with these specific companions was maybe a negative. Now, you know, what do you do with that? I, I guess, to be honest, looking at the companion design, I don't love that I have the exact same abilities every turn, but... Like, I know this might be a little more complicated to do, but it'd be cool if these were like tiles on them and they would get flipped when you used it. So instead of it always being like the same three, they could maybe like emulate six of their uh, seven cards and you'd see a little bit more variety. You couldn't spam the same thing over and over. I don't know. Maybe that's too much. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. Maybe they could just take away the precision or make it like an every once in a while kind of thing. That being said, I do love that they have companions. I like this in Osworn. I like it here. Um, I, I do think that probably my prototype is behind because a lot of the cards like didn't say what to do. It's like, hey, if you're a, a full champion, you lose your entire friggin' deck, gain like 20 sin cards. And these guys are like, la di da, I don't have cards, I don't take sin. So certainly uh, they need to be affected by those things fully. And maybe in the next version or in the currently being tested version that I don't have, they already are. But yes, I, th I think that's something they uh, could look into. But I love that these exist. They're, they're not quite 100% there for me yet. They're not quite as clean as what I saw in Osworn. But it's still a cool system, and I'm sure they'll get there eventually. Besides that, it's fun that there were multiple characters, that you had the surprise of her coming in. I love that. I mean, it's frustrating because I didn't find the right story things. But I love that what happened in the Chronicle phase plays into here. Because, you know, they hinted at, first of all, there's another confrontation objective that I never saw because I didn't do the right stuff in the Chronicle. And I know the designers talked about having multiple ways to finish it. So I bet there was like some alternate thing where I could like peacefully talk to him or defeat her. Like he never even found out she was an imposter, right? They, they implied she was an imposter, but I didn't even know that she was an imposter. <laughs> I didn't even tell him. He's just boinking his fake queen. I don't know, man. <laughs> so it, it's cool that there's replay, but I also feel like I'm kind of a failure. Uh, the throne never got to do much. Should I be able to kill it so easily? I don't know. I don't know. I wonder how, like, if it had counterattacked. Oh, interesting. The throne. It heals itself. Yeah, a lot of its counterattacks heal itself. So again, the fact that I was able to do so many precision strikes to take it out so quickly probably skewed the fight a bit in a way that it should not have. Um, Other things, picking stuff up. I know that was like a big selling point. I like the idea of like people carrying things and throwing them. 
it was pretty fun. It, it seemed a little too easy for me to escape, especially when they grabbed me during my turn, like a reaction, and then I could just discard a card to escape. I'd love for them to like grab me and throw me right away. <laughs> Again, I don't want the game to punish me too much, like, but th this is sort of the cinematic fun of the system, and the fact that I could avoid it so easily in this particular fight detracted somewhat from that fun. So I, I love the promise of it. Um, I, I just maybe think it should be a little bit tougher to escape than it is currently, just so that they can throw me like a rag doll around a little bit more. Um, rebalancing these things. They're already doing that, so I'm not even going to comment on that. Yes, they seem like, again, just dealing damage at the end is a little anticlimactic. But they'll fix that, so I'm not worried about that. Uh, let's get to the dice. Let's get to the dice. Um, I think I think this could be a bit polarizing because you saw that you know with two of the six faces being the fumbles, you can get like a horrific turn or you can get a meh turn. Now, already the change that I was trying out here that I think is going to be what they go with because they said it probably is, where instead of multiple dice triggering like here instead of this triggering three cards it triggers one card stronger i think that'll be a good change because that way if you roll like ridiculously badly you don't have to pause the game for like 20 minutes while the boss does stuff although it is weird with like when you saw cards that targeted multiple people do they all get the attack bonus is only like the main target get the attack bonus i don't know again i'm playing with uh, rules that aren't even in my rule book so it's hard to say you saw that the rules tend to even out you tend to get a wound in you have ways to mitigate your dice and like get hits um, but clearly sometimes you're going to roll terribly. Sometimes you're not going to roll any counterattack at all. It is a potentially swingier system than something where like you always hit and you have exploding crits and like that kind of thing. So th this one will be a bit, uh, based on your taste, but honestly, in this play, I thought it was great. Like I was worried I would be bothered by the randomness more and I, I wasn't, I thought it was pretty fun. A few other things to mention, cause I know the video is going long. Uh, the fact that you can see exactly what they'll do and minimize it with clever positioning. I both love that and, you know, I'm not 100% sure about it. Because <laughs> it is cool that if you pay attention, you can, like, mitigate the worst of what they're going to do. But at the same time, if you, like, nerf it entirely, it's not that cool. Now, there were very few cards that did that. The only ones, like, what? Where was it? The, uh, the poet thing, where, like, it literally gave me a bonus by getting me all my people in the line. That was awesome. Um... But th I don't know. <laughs> the fact that it was a counterattack, like I feel like maybe when that was a counterattack, it should have gone to the back and I'd get something actually kind of surprising and random. So, but but they told me they're, they're working on the Arcana card. So again, I'm, I'm picking on stuff and, and mentioning stuff that they're already fixing. I know they're already fixing. But I got to mention, you know, this is the only copy of the game I have. I don't know if I'll ever get to do another video on it. But long story short, I had a blast. Uh, my artist murdering people was great. My devotee doing awesome stuff. And again, like the full characters, Art is doing way cooler stuff. This guy's splitting attacks. Uh, he's distracting people. Where he's putting down traps. Um, this guy can throw furniture at people. Like, heck yeah. <laughs> so certainly the companions are not like as, you know, demonstrating the full coolness of these decks. And if there are different characters you can swap in, like a different mercenary who has an entirely different deck and powers, I love that. Oh, uh, the one thing I do want to mention, I have no idea how you're going to level up. Are these always your cards? Do they change? You know, I mean, I'm looking at this like companion. Is there a new version? Do things get placed on top of this? I, I am very curious about that. And I have not heard anything from them about it yet. Like clearly you do get better weapons. I've seen those in the artifact deck and uh, get like more, uh, you know, more findings cards and that kind of thing. But I'm not sure what the character progression looks like. That, that's that's not a complaint. It's just a question. I'm sure they will, when the Game Found campaign goes live and as they're doing previews and stuff, they'll talk about it a lot more. But it's just one thing I haven't mentioned at all and I don't really know yet. But yeah, that was a lot of Dante Inferno. Uh, I hope, again, this is early. This is a prototype. And they've already demonstrated that they are very willing to take feedback and and a lot of the stuff I've mentioned to them, they're like, yeah, we know we're already working on it. It's it's a rough world with uh, prototypes as someone who, you know, kickstarted our own game last year. Y you have to make your prototypes in a timely fashion to send them to previewers. But the game keeps on evolving if you're doing your job and like working on it and developing it and you can't wait forever. So <laughs> I think the version they sent me works great. I had a blast playing it, but it's not the best version even that exists right now. And it's certainly not 
as good as the game is going to be based on my uh, experience so far talking to them and seeing how well they take feedback and how uh, much they want to talk to the community. So hopefully this video though gives you an idea of what it's like to have, or, you know, let's, let's put her back in her favorite position. Whoa, ho, 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 ho. Help. Oh, no. <laughs> and then she just stabs him in the face 50 times and he dies. <laughs> All right. That was Dante Inferno. And uh, that's the end of my coverage for this one, at least for now. So I hope you enjoyed y'all. The Game Found campaign will be live in a while. I forget exactly when. I'm sure they'll let you know. You can click the link to uh, subscribe. Good gaming, everyone. And I'll see you at the next stop.